on the day the state was proclaimed, there were 650,000 Jews and some 70,000 Arabs and Druzes in the country. The formation of Independence Day laid down certain principles for the new state. The state of Israel will be open to Jewish immigration and the gathering of the exiles. It will devote itself to developing the land for the good of all its inhabitants. It will rest upon foundations of liberty, justice, and peace as envisioned by the prophets of Israel. It will maintain complete equality of social and political rights for all its inhabitants without distinction of creed, race, and sex. I doubt whether any other state was ever confronted with such difficulties in its early days. Almost all the immigrants arrived without capital, the great majority without skill or education. Many, especially among those from Asia and Africa, were diseased. There were no houses, no employment for them, no schools for their children. In the first year, the newcomers were accommodated in abandoned villages in towns and quarters in Jaffa, Ramla, Lod, Tiberias, Abed, and so on. But in the second year, then about 240,000 arrived in 1949 alone, mostly from Asia and Africa. There were no homes available and deployment difficulties grew. Great efforts were made to settle as many as possible on the land, though previously neither they nor their immediate forebears have ever been killers on the, of the soil. Jews established less than 300 villages in the 70 years before the state. In the first four years of statehood, we built 340 villages. These were meant and built by Jews from Yemen, Morocco, Tunis, Egypt, Libya, Turkey, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, and Yugoslavia, together with pioneering Jews from Britain, United States of America, South Africa, and Western Europe. Side by side with the expansion of agriculture, great efforts were made to develop industry and factories were built for tires, pipes, chemical fertilizers, pharmaceuticals, metal and wood products, textiles, and so forth. The doubling of the population during the first four years led to a great shortage of food, clothing, and so forth, and it was necessary to impose an austerity regime which affected the veteran sections of the community. During the brief but difficult period, however, the number of agricultural settlements in the area under irrigation were doubled. During the past 15 years, the landscape of the country has been radically transferred. Almost 1,100,000 Jews have returned to Israel. All the stands have been drained. Scores of millions of trees have been planted on the hills, especially in the neighborhood of Jerusalem. The area under irrigation is being quadrupled. New roads have been built from Tel Aviv to Haifa and from Beersheba to Elat. An oil pipeline has been laid from Elat to Haifa refinery. Institutes of higher learning have been expanded. The Hebrew University in Jerusalem, the Weizmann Institute of Science in El Hobart, and the Technological Institute in Haifa, called Technion, and the research work of all scientists have reached international standards. Israel's health service and the medical care provided for immigrants have given her one of the lowest death rates in the world. Apart from Japan, Israel has the most advanced and highly developed agriculture in Asia. Their industrial standards are not lower than those of European countries. As is well known, 60% of Israel's territory is a desolate wilderness known as the Negev. This region has been the cradle of our people. For two millennia, the curse of Jeremiah the prophet hung over the Negev. The cities of the Negev shall be shut up, and none shall open them, so he said. But the curse was exercised with the renewal of Israel's independence, and the Negev is awakening to new life. The Sheba, which up to 14 years ago was a small village, has become Israel's fourth largest city, with a population of over 50,000. Elab, the first Hebrew port in the days of King Solomon, has been rebuilt, and after the final campaign, 
joined by road to Beersheba. Seven years ago, Moroccan Jews established a new town with the biblical name of the Mona between Beersheba and the Dead Sea. And another new town called Mitzperamon is being built on the great crater of that name between Beersheba and Elad. Two further Negev towns are in the planning stage, Arad in the east, where the first settlers have already arrived and the source in the west, bringing more immigrants housing them, providing work for them, educating our people, guaranteeing our security and independence, and the development of the Negev, these are the targets on which Israel's creative energies will be concentrated during the next decade. And we look to our friends overseas to join us in these historic endeavors.